So in this video, we're going to talk about R permutations, which are very similar. They are permutations, but they're not of the entire set. They're only of R elements in the set. So an R permutation in a set of N elements is an ordered selection of R elements taken from that set. So if we want to think about this, we can think of the set A, which is little a, b, c, d, and e, which means the size of a, which equals n, right, because we have this set of n elements, is going to be 5. Now, if we let r equal 3, what that's saying is how many ways can I grab three elements out of a and organize them, right? So we would have a, B, C is one ordering. E, D, A is another ordering. C, A, you know, E is a third ordering, and so on. So we want to know how many orderings are there of three elements out of this larger set. So a way of thinking about this was mentioned in a previous video, and that is we've got three spots, right? We've got three places to put our ordering, or pin numbers. We talked about this with pin numbers. How many ways are there to choose my first letter? Well, there's five total, so there's going to be five ways of choosing that first letter in the ordering. And then to choose the second letter, well, there's only four letters left, so there's going to be four. And to choose that third number, um, there's only three left, so it's going to be three. right? So this is going to be to order a permutation of five elements where we pick three is going to equal five times four times three, which is going to be 60. That means, so let me write this, this is going to be P of five, three is going to be 60. There's 60 different ways of doing this. So formally, if we want to look at this, we're going to again, we're going to say the permutation of n elements where we choose r of them. This is not n choose r, that's different. We'll get to that in a later video. This is a permutation that's referring to combinations. Okay, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to the first, uh, we're going to have n ways of choosing the first uh, element times n minus 1 ways of choosing the second element, excuse me, times n minus 2 ways of choosing the next element, and so on, all the way down to n minus r plus 1. And that may seem a little odd, but if we look at our example up here, it's going to work out. Because there we had um, 5 and choos uh, choosing a subset of length 3, and so n was 5, r was 3, 5 minus 3 gives us 2, and then we pull that plus 1 down, and we get 3, which is exactly what we saw in this third spot. That's the last number, so that's going to be the last number in our product, right, this 3. So another way to write this is that this per, number of permutations is going to be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And why does that make sense? Let's look at our little example again of the, the sets up there. If we have n was 5, so we're going to have 5 factorial, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And now I want to divide it by n minus r. Well, remember, n is 5 and r is um, 3. So this is going to be 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. Now what's going to, what's going to happen is that these cancel out, and we're left with exactly what we came up with right, right there. So you see that this, this way of framing it, what we're doing is 
we're taking n factorial and then we're dividing out but the extra numbers we don't need at the end. Okay. So this is our formula for permutations, the number of permutations. So just like we had our example with the number of permutations of the word computer, now we're going to look at the word bytes and see how many ways can we choose three letters of those and write them in a row. So this is a three permutation. out of five elements, All right? Because if you count the letters in the word bytes, there's five letters there. So this is gonna be permutation of n equals five, r equals three, and it's gonna be five factorial and five minus three factorial. Hey, I think that's exactly what we did on the previous on the previous slide, that was silly. Um, so this works out to five factorial over two factorial, which is five times four times three times two times one over two times one, just like we did before. And we're gonna get that this is equal to 60. Right. Now I want you to be aware, not just of this formula, but of why we have that formula. What does it mean? Because it's really easy to forget formulas, but if you understand how we came up with the formula, you can always recreate them. So again, this is, if we had, um, if we had a set um, with 10 elements, elements in it, where we wanna choose, well, pick a number five, then we can fit this becomes probability or excuse me permutations of 10 5 equals 10 factorial times 5 minus or 10 minus 5 factorial but why again well because we really we have five spots right and there's 10 ways to pick the first one 9 to pick the second eight, seven, six. And one way of getting this value is to work this out, which is really 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And 10 minus five, that's five factorial. That's saying we're gonna get rid of five times four times three times two times one. Well, again, that's getting rid of all of these so that our value is gonna be the same as what we want there. Okay, and that is the why the formula. Why does the formula exist? Why does the formula work? This is why. One thing this is good for is say you have a class and you want to choose, you wanna put on a play. And the class, there's only five spots in the play, but there's 20 people in the class. So what do you want to do? Well, if you have 25 people in the class and five roles in the play and you want to be fair about it, what if you just drew, uh, you know, drew five names out of a pot? Well, you might ask, how many ways can that be done? Well, this is, of course, the R permutations of 25, 5, which is going to be 25 factorial, which is a very large number, divided by 25 minus 5 factorial. Now if you try to calculate 25 factorial, your calculator may not even do it, but if it does, it's going to give, you're going to get a number with 25 digits. So it's a very, very long number. I don't even know how to read that number. Um, however, this trick, by the way we um, can solve it, 25 
right? Because this denominator works out to 20 factorial. I'm not going to write all of this out. I'm just going to do that. All right, because 20 factorial times all of these digits is 25 factorial. And then we're dividing by 20 factorial. Hey, look, all that goes away. Now you can plug this into your calculator. And you'll get still a big number, but much more manageable. This is 6 million... 375,600 different ways to do this. So it's an awful lot of ways of picking those five people. So here's another example. There are 100 submissions to a contest and say nobody can pick. Nobody can decide whose is better. They're all equally good, but we still have to assign first, second, and third place winners. So we're going to assign them randomly. So how many ways can we assign them randomly? I realize this is a little bit of a unrealistic setup, but that's okay. This is going to give us 100 factorial over 100 minus 3 factorial, which is 100 factorial over 97 factorial. Again, you try to plug these numbers in, you're going to break your calculator. However, working them out, as we've been doing, makes it much easier, right? And we can cancel that out. We're left with 100 times 99 times 98, which if you get your calculator out is 970,200. What's interesting is that this, the number of ways of doing this is less than the number of ways of choosing five people out of a class of 25. And that's because that second number, even though the first number is a lot bigger, 100 instead of 25, that second number is smaller. And it's the more digits, it's the more, more spots you're trying to select to go in the orders that's really going to ramp that value up.